the last video uh, I talked about obstetric uh, bleeding definition and I uh, talked about the types of obstetric bleeding okay and we started talking about obstetric bleeding in details by abruption placenta in the uh, previous video and in this video I'm going to talk about another condition the second most common cause of postpartum hemorrhage which is placenta previa placenta previa is an insertion of the placenta completely or partially at the lower uterine segment okay a placenta normally should not be at the lower uterine segment but in the case of placenta previa we have a placenta that is inserted completely or partially at the lower uterine segment and to call it placenta previa it should occur uh, after 28 weeks okay because more than 90 percent of uh, placenta previa in the first trimester uh, and in the second trimester will be normal at birth date okay so we it ha to call it placenta previa it should be above 28 weeks 28 weeks okay so this is placenta previa definition of placenta previa how does it happen what is the pathophysiology of placenta previa normally as we said placenta moves toward the more vascular uh, vascularized fundus okay of the uterus this is the uterus let's assume that and this is the upper part of the uterus and this is the lower part near the cervix okay the upper part is more uh, vascularized okay so the placenta normally moves to the upper part of the uh, uterus and by this moving or migration the lower part this lower part will be lower vascularized okay less vascularized okay and that will lead to atrophy of this lower part okay this is normally happen if a placenta fails to migrate for one cause or another the placenta stays in this place without migration to the more vascularized part then we have a case of a placenta previa placenta previa okay now I want to uh, make you know that the apparent movement of placenta this migration or the movement uh, of placenta is not really a, a movement okay it's just the develop development of the lower uterine segment the development of this segment after 28 weeks a uh, week will push the placenta that way okay the the segment will be larger and the placenta will be nearer to the upper segment okay we said that the lower uh, segments of the placenta will atrophy okay just erase some to help us okay this is the placenta we said in migration some of the lower part of placenta will atrophy okay so uh, sometimes in some cases it will leave it will leave some running vessels w when atrophy it will leave just some running vessels without any placenta tissue and that uh, those running vessels will invade the membranes of the uterus okay uh, making a case of vasa previa vasa previa okay so this is what happened okay this is the pathophysiology of placenta previa now let's move to the risk factors of placenta previa what are the risk factors of placenta previa the most important one is, is previous placenta previa okay uterine surgery cesarean section uh, myometomy okay uh, and so on are all risk factors of placenta previa and like abruptio placenta multiple gestations and multiparity will also cause placenta previa and I think in the case of placenta previa the multiple gestation multiparity will uh, cause uh, will, will make a larger a placenta the larger placenta is the risk factor of placenta previa okay large placenta is a risk factor of placenta previa smoking also is a risk factor of placenta previa as as it is 
for abruption placenta and as it isn't for preeclampsia okay smoking is protective factor for preeclampsia okay increased maternal age is also a risk factor for placenta previa so all increased maternal age multiparity multiple gestation smoking a previous similar condition is all risk factors or common risk factors between placenta previa and the abruption placenta okay here uterine surgeries is of special importance in a case of placenta previa okay this is the risk factors of placenta previa we talked about the pathophysiology and the risk factors now let's move to grading of placenta previa we have four grades of placenta previa the first one and all the grades of placenta previa depends on the site of the placenta relating to the cervix okay and grade one the placenta is within five zoom it in to see more clear within five centimeters of cervix okay in a grade one the placenta okay sorry is within five centimeters of cervix so this is the uh, cervix here and the uh, this is the uterine wall a placenta will be within five centimeters of the cervix okay but will not reach the cervix in a grade two a placenta will reach the cervix okay but in, uh, it will reach the cervix and stop it stop there okay it will not uh, cover the cervix in a grade three a placenta previa the a placenta will cover the cervix but partially okay it will cover a part of the cervix part of the cervix in grade four the placenta will cover all cervix this is a complete part placenta previa it will cover all the cervix okay these are the grades of placenta previa and a, gra a grade one and a grade two is uh, also uh, called the minor placenta previa okay grade one within five centimeters of the cervix grade two reach the cervix but doesn't cover it grade three cover part of the cervix so it is a partial placenta previa grade four complete placenta previa it covers all the cervix okay grade one and grade two is a minor placenta previa grade three and grade four is a major placenta previa these are the grading uh, these are the types of Placenta previa, okay, or the grades of placenta previa. Now let's move to the presentation of placenta. Previa. How does the patient come uh, to us with the placenta previa after uh, 28 weeks? Okay, the symptoms is usually after 28 weeks, as uh, as we said, and the diagnosis should be after 28 weeks. Okay, so after 28 weeks, the lower uterine segment will develop, okay, and become thin. So the lower uterine segment will develop become bigger and thinner and if we have a case of a placenta previa then this development will disrupt the placenta attachment normally there is no placenta in the lower segment if we have a placenta in the lower segment and after 28 weeks we have the lower uterine segment movement then there will be a disruption of placenta attachment to the uterus, okay? There will be a, a vulgin of the anchoring villi. The placenta is fixed in the uterus by anchoring villi. If the lower segment moves, okay, th there will be a vulgin, a vulgin of these villi, okay? And that villi, and that will lead to a bleeding, okay? Bleeding is the presenting symptom to placenta previa, so it's very important if uh, and bleeding occurs usually after 36 weeks in 60 percent of cases okay and in uh, between 20, 32 to 36 weeks 30 percent of cases we have bleeding and before 32 weeks we have just uh, bleeding just in 10 percent of cases okay so uh, the more the gestational age the more the bleeding occur in placenta previa but what if we have no bleeding then we have a case of what we call a placenta previa accreta a placenta is adherent 
to the myometrium of the uterus and sometimes it is adherent to the deeper part of the uterus in placenta in creta and sometimes it's adherent to the serosa of the uterus okay in case of uh, placenta pericreta okay now let's move to the physical examination we'll talk about a creta and creta and pericreta in details in minutes okay so physical examination the most important things to take care of is vital signs we have to look for blood pressure it is a bleeding presenting part is usually high in placenta previa so one of the causes of a high presenting part is placenta previa also for a bladder is another and we have many causes okay one of them is placenta previa and you have to assess fetal condition the th the important thing here to take is that vaginal examination is contraindicated to be done in placenta previa because it will provoke a huge bleeding and a shock state okay so it's contraindicated but if it is done uh, accidentally you will find soft uh, soft cervix sorry okay soft tissue that is the placenta how to diagnose placenta previa by transvaginal ultrasound and the question is why a uh, transvaginal ultrasound is better than abdominal ultrasound because transvaginally is nearer as uh, it as a clear okay and it is not impeded by fetal head in transabdominal ultrasound fetal head may cover the posterior for example uh, placenta previa but in transvaginal it will not be impeded by fetal head the internal os is directly seen in transvaginal ultrasound transabdominal ultrasound it is not directly seen it is imagined in the internal os so that's why we use transvaginal ultrasound rather than transabdominal ultrasound in diagnosing a placenta previa is it safe is it safe transvaginal ultrasound Pay vaginal examination is contraindicated. So how do we use transvaginal ultrasound? Because we administer or introduce the transvaginal ultrasound in an anterior angle near the fornix, okay? So, and we keep a safety margin or a safety distance of two to th three centimeters apart from the cervix, okay? And the one who does the uh, transvaginal ultrasound should be uh, experienced, okay? Sometimes we use what we call translabial ultrasound, just be, be, be between labia, and it is still better than a transabdominal ultrasound. So transvaginal is the best. Then we can use translabial if we are afraid of doing transvaginal ultrasound, and then we can do transabdominal ultrasound. This is how the diagnosis is made. Okay. So uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the management of placenta previa and the complication with the video. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.